Hi guys. Okay, this is your first set of notes. Um, so unit zero, lesson one. Um, real quick, on Wednesday, there is um, packet and supply pickup. So what I have put in there for you are two things, and they're both blue, hopefully. The first one is your big um, notes packet. This has unit zero and unit one in that. Okay, unit zero is the review of quadratics. And then unit one is our first essential um, essentials of geometry is what that's called. And then there's also a su uh, supplemental sheets if needed. So this are just these are extra worksheets that we may use throughout the units. Um, so just hold on to those. So when I ask for you to go to the supplemental packets or get a worksheet out, it would be in, in that unless I forgot it and then I'll just attach it into Schoology. Okay, so. I'm going to fill out the notes and you guys will be able to see me fill out the notes and what I want for you to do is I also want for you to fill out your notes along with me, okay? So the first unit is just a review unit to go over quadratics and solving them. So um, learning target is that I can solve, I'm going to put in parentheses and factor, quadratics. and find its zeros. All right, so here we have the standard form of a quadratic where it's ax squared plus bx plus c. A lot of times you will see numbers in for a, b, and c, okay? a, b, and c are known values in which a cannot be zero. If a were 0, that would mean that there's no x squareds there. So it just turns into a linear equation because you would have the bx plus c. a and b are defined as coefficients. More numbers in front of variables. While c is defined as a constant. Constant is a number that does not carry a variable. Quadratics are either functions or equations. Either way, x is the independent variable. Okay. Intercept form. So another way that you will see quadratics is an intercept form. And this is what intercept form. Okay. A, this guy right here, is known as either the stretch or compress value. If we think of a quadratic, when I graph it, it becomes a U-shape, right? It becomes a parabola. So this A makes it either skinnier or wider. So depending on what that number is. Okay, so that's why we call it the stretch or compress. P and Q are the quadratic's intercepts or zeros, also known as its x-intercept or roots. If a product of one or more values is equal to zero, then one of the factors has to be zero. So all that's saying is like if I know four times x equals zero, well then x has to be zero, right? Because four times zero equals zero. If I know I have x times y equals zero, I know either x or y have to be zero because that's the only way you can get a zero when you multiply. Okay. Solving a quadratic equation by factoring. This is used to, uh, used to convert a quadratic from standard form to intercept form. An algebraic method to solve for the blank of a quadratic equation in one variable. Solve for the zeros. Here are your steps. First, you are convert to standard form, convert to standard form by moving all terms to one side and equaling to zero. You're going to look to divide out a GCF. So is there something that goes into all the terms? And you're going to divide that out if so. Calculate the value of AC, which is just A times C. Find two numbers that multiply to AC and combine or add 
to be. Hopefully this is kind of, you're remembering this stuff because this should be a review, okay? Um, next, use these two terms to expand the middle term in order to create four total terms. Then group the first two terms and the second two terms and factor out the GCF of each group. Rewrite the expression as a product of two binomials. Remember binomial is what's up front. Okay. And then use the zero product property by setting each individual factor equal to zero and solving. Okay, I have turned to the next page, so go ahead and go to the back. Um, here we go. We have our formula, our standard form of a quadratic. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to follow those steps. I'm first going to GCF it. So I'm going to take out the biggest thing that goes into it, if I can. You can't always do that. So in the, I use three numbers. I know three goes into each of them. So I'm going to take out a three. And I have zero equals three, parentheses. Three goes into that one, so it's just x squared. Minus goes in there twice, 2x minus 15. 15 times 3 is that 45. What I prefer to do is I do a crisscross method, what I call crisscross. So when I multiply, I want a negative 15. But when I add, I want this negative 2. Always bring the sign with it, okay? If you don't bring the sign with it, then you're not going to get it correct. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but those two numbers also have to add to negative 2 somehow. Well, I know 5 times 3 multiplied to 15, and some combination of 5 and 3 would give me negative 2. I want 1 negative, because when I multiply a negative times a positive, I'll get a negative. And so I'm going to put my negative sign on the 5 because this is a negative 2, so I need my bigger number to have the negative sign. So negative 5 times 3 gives me negative 15, but negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2. I'm going to bring this down, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down x squared. And instead of writing this negative 2x, I'm going to use these two terms instead. So negative 5x plus 3x, because those two terms together, gives me that negative 2x minus 15. And then what they said on the front is you are going to group. So you're going to take your first two terms and group those together, and your second two terms and group those together. And I always bring the sign with it. So I still have 3 on the outside, and now I have x squared minus 5x and then 3x minus 15. Now what you're going to do is you are going to actually you're going to GCF those. I'm going to take out an x, I'm left with x minus 5. I'm going to take out a 3, I'm left with x minus 5. My two terms would be these two together, so x plus 3. And then these two terms together, x minus 5. Bring down my 3 from before. An easier way that we could have done that. This is my term and this is my term. So it would have just been x minus 5 and x plus 3. I get the same answer. This method will work all the time, even if I have an a value that's not 1. But my a value here was 1, so I could have done the easier method. So what we have now is we have 0 is equal to 3 parentheses x minus, or x plus 3, x minus 5. So what this is saying is this times this times this equals zero. Well, we just talked about if something times something equals zero, one of those two things has to equal zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this guy equal to zero and this guy equal to zero. This guy is already three, so it doesn't matter. So we're going to do x plus three equals zero and x minus five equals zero. So to get x by itself, I subtract three, so x equals negative three. And here I add five, so x equals five. My zeros are right there. If they ask me to put that as points, those are x-intercepts. So that's where it would cross the x-axis, right here and right here. So as points, that would be at negative 3, y is 0, and then 5, y is 0. So those as points would be that. Okay? B um, only has two terms, which is fine. We're going to just do it a little bit differently. We're actually going to GCF this guy first. I'm going to do 0 equals. I'm going to take out the biggest thing that goes into both, which is 4 and, and an x. When I do that, I'm left with x minus 3. Same process now. This one's a little shorter. I'm going to set this guy equal to 0 and this guy equal to 0. So 4x equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. 
So to get x by itself here, I divide by 4. Well, 0 divided by anything is just 0, so x equals 0, meaning this whole term could be 0 times this would give me 0. Or this term could be 0 by making x equal to 3, because I add 3 to both sides. And then that 0 times anything would give me 0. Written as a point, x is 0, y is 0. x here is 3, y is 0. I want you to pause me, and I want you to try C and D on your own. See if you can understand what to do on those. Um, you're still getting everything. My clue is to get everything to the same side. Factor it if you, or GCF it if you can, and then start factoring it, okay? All right, so here we go. First thing, I want everything off to the same side, and I want this to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I get 0 equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. Okay, I'm going to think to myself, can I GCF that? Is there something that goes into 3, 4, and 4? And there's not. So I'm going to crisscross it, but now my top number is this times this. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. When I add, I want negative 4. So now i got to think in my head, what multiplies to negative 12 but adds to negative 4? Some combination of 6 and 2 would multiply to 12 and add to 4. I want negative, so I want one of those negatives, and it has to be my bigger one because we want it to stay in negative land. So now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to keep it 0 equals, bring down my first term, 3x squared. Instead of writing my second term, I use these two things that I just solved for. So that would be negative 6x, positive 2x, and I bring down my negative 4. I group, 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 group. Okay. And I GCF it. Biggest thing that goes into these two would be 3x, and I'm left with x minus 2. Biggest thing that goes into here would be 2 and I'm left with x minus 2. Your quick check. This guy right here should always be the same as this guy if you did it correctly, right? Your two answers are your GCFs put together, so 3x plus 2, and the guy that they share, x minus 2, just one of those. That's still equal to 0. But now for finding our zeros, we set those equal to 0. So I do 3x plus 2 equals 0 x minus 2 equals 0. This one's easier, so I'm going to do that real quick. x equals 2, written as a point that is at 2 comma 0. Here I subtract 2 from both sides, so I get 3x equals negative 2. Divide by 3, divide by 3, so x equals negative 2 thirds. Written as a point, that's negative 2 thirds comma 0. Circle my answer. All right. One more. Okay. Here. Go ahead, if you didn't pause me before, try to pause me now. Unpause me when you're done trying, and then see if you did it correctly. So subtract 3x, subtract 3x. What happens to 3x's minus 3x's? They're gone. So what I have is 0 equals 2x squared minus 18. Okay? I am going to solve. There's, this, there's two ways that you could actually solve it, but I'm actually going to get the x squared by itself and square root it. I'm going to add 18 to both sides to get rid of that. And I get this. I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get 9 equals x squared. I'm going to square root. I'm going to square root. The reason I'm square rooting is because I have an x squared, I want to get it down to an x. Square root of x squared gives me x. Square root of 9 is a positive or negative 3. So you do have two answers. You have 3 comma 0, and then you have negative 3 comma 0. Oops, sorry guys. Real quick, I'm going to talk about another way you could have solved that. I'm going to make this really fast. Let's say I've got to this point right here, so I subtracted the 3x. Well, I can GCF that, and I take out a 2. I'm left with x squared minus 9. Two things there. You may see that's a difference of squares. That's a shortcut one. So on the difference of squares, this is a squared number, so x times x gives me that. This is a squared number, so 3 times 3 gives me that, but I need a negative, so that would be a negative and a positive. 2 still outside. Set both equal to 0, you're going to get a positive 3 or a negative 3 for an answer. Or, at this point, you could have seen to here, didn't know it's a difference of squares. When you multiply, you want negative 9, there's no middle term, so that's 0. So that would be 3 and negative 3, which will give us our two answers here. So that is the first set of notes. There will be a homework assignment in Schoology that you need to complete after this set of notes. Let me know if you have any questions in the discussion board, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.